and brought them out and said, Sons, what must I do to be saved? I want you to keep note of the words of the jailer. He uses two strong words. Number one, must. Number two, save. When the word must is used, it simply means the most important and the only requirement. No plan B, no option B, because he's asking them, Sons, what must I? What must I? Is there anything that I must do so that I can go to heaven? Is there anything that I must do so that I can see the kingdom of God? Is there anything that I must do so that I don't go to hell? The word saved. He says, what must I do to be saved? The word saved simply means being delivered from the powers of eternal damnation. Never going to hell again. You know, when we are doing our soul winning, sometimes when we ask people what they understand by the word saved, people will give you different dimensions. Others will tell you to be saved is to dress well. To be saved is to stop smoking. To be saved is to be a good person. To be saved is to pray every day. But brothers and sisters, even without referring to the scriptures, the word saved comes from the word saved. It's an action. And only a powerful personality, a powerful subject, a powerful power can save you where you are helpless. Say for example, if I was in my house, and my house was on fire, at that point in time I cannot deliver myself. I am in risk of dying. What will happen unto me? I'll begin screaming, calling for help. And whoever will come and secure me out of that trouble will be called my savior with regards to that situation. This man is asking Paul and Silas, what must I do to be saved? What is the requirement? There must be requirement that I'm supposed to do so that I never go to hell. So if you are hearing me right, this is the point. This is a man who is asking a question to Paul and Silas because he does not want to go to hell because of his sins. Number one, in that question, he realizes that he's in danger of going to hell. You know when you begin to ask someone, what must I do to, to be saved? What must I do to go to heaven? It begins from you being informed that, hey, you are in danger. The probability, the chances of you going to hell are high. Any sin that you have ever committed in your life is enough to take you to hell. It's not about a big sin. It's not about a small sin. No. Any sin that you've ever committed in your life and you are still in that condition, you have not come to a point of asking Paul and Silas, what must I do to be saved? You have not come to a point of agreeing to speak to our soul winners, agreeing to speak to Pastor Paul, agreeing to look out for the truth. That sin is just enough to take
Hello? Good morning. How are you? You are talking to Pastor Paul Weringa from this church here. Faithful Word Christ Baptist Church. Yeah, so <coughs> the reason why I knocked this door was to help. Uh, sorry, I said to help, but uh, you discovered that I came to help. So I just wanted to know if you are a Christian, if you go to church or not. And I'll appreciate for uh, if you give me an answer. Are you a Christian? I'm a Christian. You go to church? Mm. Which one? Mm. Which church? Faith of salvation. Faith of? Salvation. Oh, faith of salvation. Mm. Imagine I knocked this door because of that word salvation. Mm. Okay. So, when we talk of faith of salvation, I really wanted to know if so far you are a hundred percent sure that when you will die, you will go to heaven. Are you a hundred percent for sure that if you die, even I'm not, I'm not saying that you are not going to die today, but do you have that assurance that anytime it comes, you will go to heaven and not to hell? Do you have that assurance? <laughs> I like your answer. Okay, you believe you believe that you will go, but only God knows. Okay. So if I was to tell you that I am here to help you to be a hundred percent sure, because that's why I'm here. I don't want to leave you with doubts. Uh, we've not come to make church members. We've just come to make sure that as you continue living on this planet Earth, every day when you wake up. You are a hundred percent sure that when I die, I go to heaven because God says you can be sure if you want. Mm -hmm. What do you think a person has to do to go to heaven? What do you think you have to do as a person so that you go to heaven when you die? Do you know? What is that thing that you have to do to go to heaven? <laughs> okay, you should not be a sinner. Okay. Do you find it do you find it easy, sister? You said you, you, you are who? Your name? Anne. Do, do you find it easy to stop sinning, sister? Is it an easy thing? To stop sinning because you said for you to go to heaven you have to stop sinning. Did you succeed in that area? Have you made sure that you are no longer sinning? It's hard, isn't it? Okay. So the good news is that God has provided the easiest thing to, to, to go to heaven and it's not about you stopping sinning. And I'm going to show you faithfully from the scriptures provided you give me your attention. Okay. Now, Number one, I want you to know that we are all sinners and we are going to, you know, God says that we are sinners and we are not perfect. If you look at Romans chapter 3 verses 10, the Bible says, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. So God is saying no one is perfect. I am not perfect. I believe you also believe that you are not perfect. Why are we not perfect? The Bible says, verse 23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So the word sin means breaking the commandments of God. So God is saying everyone has broken his commandments. You understand? So if we have broken his commandments, then we know that we, can, we don't deserve to go to heaven. Because it's until you have never broken any of his commandments, that's when you go to heaven. So if we have broken all his commandments, where do we deserve to go? We deserve to go to hell, isn't it? You know, have you ever heard of a place known as hell? A place of fire known as hell? Because if you are not going to heaven, you are going to hell, isn't it? So Romans 6, 23, the Bible says, For the wages of sin is death. So because we have broken the commandments of God, and because we are sinners, we deserve to be paid of God, and God is going to pay us death. You understand? So when the Bible speaks of death here, it is not talking about just the death of your body. You need to... Okay, fine, fine, fine. <coughs> 
So the, when the Bible speaks about God paying us death to go to hell, mm -hmm. I don't want you to understand like when a person dies, now he has been paid. Mm -hmm. What happens is that a person who dies as a sinner, the body dies, but the soul goes to hell. That's why in Revelation 21 verses 8, the Bible says, Revelation 21 verse 8, the Bible says, but the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth the fire and brimstone which is the second death so the bible says people have committed all these sins including lying they'll have to go to hell right have you ever lied before is it only one time or many times for me i've lied many times i don't know about you is it only one time or many times many times isn't it let me show you another scene the bible says proverbs 24 9 the thought the thought of foolishness is sin so the bible says when you have foolish thoughts again you deserve to go to hell so why am i taking you through these uh, verses just to show you that there's no way we can say we can go to heaven by stopping our sins it is so difficult isn't it because if you are not stealing you are lying if you're not lying you're having foolish thoughts all right so do you think god is loving or hateful god is loving so if god is loving does he want you to go to hell or heaven heaven isn't it mm. so i think if god is loving and he wants you to go to heaven mm. he is not going to make it so difficult for you to find the way to heaven he's going to make everything easy and this is how god made it easy for you sister i hope that we are together though you are, the child wants your attention the bible says in romans 5 this is how god made it easy romans chapter 5 verse 8 the bible says but god commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners christ died for us so the way God made it easy is by allowing his only begotten son Jesus Christ to die for you so when Jesus died for you it is important for you to understand that he paid all the debt for you you don't have to struggle to go to heaven Jesus did everything for you all right so Jesus never committed any sin but he took that sin that you committed on your behalf so that for you you don't struggle to go to heaven because jesus when he died because of your sin he again went into hell to suffer because of your sin and the bible says he was there for three days and three nights for your salvation are you gonna breastfeed her shaka. <laughs> Perfect. Nice. Oh, you need to sit down? Okay. All right. No problem. So, what did Jesus do? Jesus died for me and you on our behalf. He never committed any sin. But then he took that burden for me and you. All right? So, if Jesus has paid for all our sins, do we need to stop again our sins to go to heaven? No, because he, he became a sinner on our behalf. That's why the Bible says in John 3.16, John 3.16, the Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Now that you understand that Jesus died for all your sins, there's only one thing that God requires you to do to go to heaven. You have to believe in him. Because believing in him means you trust that he did everything on your behalf. And the Bible says when you believe in him you don't perish that means you don't go to hell but instead you get what we call everlasting life a life without an end so at believing in Jesus Christ you immediately get what is called everlasting life you understand mm -hmm. verses 18 the bible says he that believeth on him is not condemned you believe on Jesus Christ God will never take you to hell 
That is what the Bible is saying. But he that believeth not is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. So what makes the difference? We are all sinners. We deserve to go to hell. But we have sinners who are going to heaven. Why? Because they believed in Jesus. And when they believed in Jesus, they got everlasting life. But still we'll have sinners who still go to hell. Why? Because they did not believe in the name of the only begotten Son of God. So, to make it clear for you, I'm going to take you to Acts chapter 16 to show you a person asking Paul and Silas what he must do to go to heaven. And I believe that that question will be very important for us so that you are not, not going to have any doubt on matters going to heaven and what you need to do because if you look at Acts chapter 16 verse 30 this is the story of Paul and Silas in jail and I know that you, you have a clue of that story when they prayed unto God and they were set free but the police that was guarding Paul and Silas came forward to ask them a question the Bible says and brought them out and said sirs what must I do to be saved so what must I do so that I go to heaven look at what they told him and they said believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and thy house they didn't tell him to stop his sins you understand they did not tell him go to church they did not tell him pay money in church they did not tell him become a good person or they just told him to do what to believe. to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ so you can see clearly sister out of this place that you only need to believe on Jesus Christ alone if you try to do other things to go to heaven, the sad news is that you will not reach heaven. Because even in Matthew 7, Jesus shows the fact that people who are calling themselves Christians and are trying to do other things so that they go to heaven, they will not reach heaven. But they have to do the will of the Father, which is to believe. He says in Matthew 7, 21, not everyone not everyone that saith unto me lord lord shall enter into the kingdom of heaven but he that doeth mark this the will of my father which is in heaven so jesus is saying it's not everyone who says lord lord that shall go to heaven but you have to make sure that you are doing the will of his father the will of the father means what the father wants you to do so that you go to heaven not your will but the will of the father jesus is not saying that whatever you think is right to do to go to heaven is what you shall do he's saying you better look out and understand what the will of the father is he says in verses 22 many will say to me in that day lord lord have we not prophesied in thy name so in that day many people will be giving Jesus different reasons as to why they think they have to go to heaven. Others will be telling him, we prophesied in your name. And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. Others will be telling him, we rebuked demons out of people using your name. And others will be telling him, we did good things. Like, we helped people, and what have you. But what is Jesus? Uh, sorry, Kidogo to you, you need the attention? Huh? Okay. Bless. We prophesied in your name. Mm. They are telling Jesus, we rebuke demons using your name. They are telling Jesus, we did wonderful works, good things in your name. What is Jesus telling them? And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you that work in equity. Look here. You try to go to church. You become a singer. You know The pastor knows you. But in the end time, Jesus tells you, I don't know. It's bad news, isn't it? Mm. Yes. So where's the problem of these people? The problem is here. They did not do the will of his father. They focused doing things in the name of Jesus, but they never did the will of the father. So what is the will of the father? This is the will of the father. Just to confirm that the Bible is, you know, saying the same thing. In John 6:40, we get to know what the will of the father is. The Bible says, and this is the will of him that sent me that everyone which said the son the son jesus christ and believeth in him should have everlasting life and i will raise him up in the last day so what god the father wants you to do to go to heaven is when you see the son jesus christ you believe in him all right <laughs> Did the Bible say you have to be a good person to go to heaven? Mm -mm. Sure believe. Just believe alone, isn't it? Mm -hmm. What if you said, I want to be a good person to go to heaven? Will you reach heaven? <laughs> Will you go to heaven for being a good person? Mm -mm. But only doing what? Mm -hmm. Believing in Jesus Christ, right? Mm -hmm. So if you are to go to your church and the pastor says, you have to stop all your sins to go to heaven, is that true? It's not true, isn't it? Mm. What if your pastor said you have to keep all the commandments to go to heaven? Is that true? Mm. What is true? Believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, right? Now, before I finish, I want to show you that no matter what you do after you believe, you will still go to heaven. But there's something that God will do unto you 
in your body before you die. Because mm -hmm. when we tell people that they only have to believe, others bring problems saying, so you mean I can sin the way I want. Jesus did not require you to stop your sins to go to heaven. Mm -hmm. Jesus only required you Jesus only required you to believe in him so that you're going to heaven because he's the one who died for all your sins. Mm. And so, I'm going to use an example of your child. Is this your firstborn or there's another one? First. This one, the firstborn. Mm. Or oh, there's a firstborn. Mm. He's going to school. Mm. Okay, fine. How many times did you give birth to that child? Is it twice or once or many times? Mm. <laughs> or once, isn't it? Mm. The reason why I'm asking you that is because I want to show you that the, the, the moment you believe on Jesus, mm. you are born in the family of God mm. and you are only born again once. Mm. It's not many times. Mm. The Bible says, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God even to them that believe on his name. So you receive Jesus, that's when you become a child of God. How do you receive Jesus? By believing. Mm. Not giving your life to Jesus, but by believing on Jesus. Okay? Mm. So the moment you become a child of God, you forever remain to be a child of God. That's why if you consider John 10, Jesus says that immediately you are born again, you will never lose your salvation, you remain to be a child of God. Uh, John 10, 26, the Bible says, 27, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, that means they shall never go to hell, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. So Jesus is proving to the fact that whatever happens mm. nothing can remove you from the hands of Jesus and nothing can remove you from the hands of his father because you have everlasting life you can never go to hell so the question would be what if I sin pastor you've told me believing I go to heaven mm. but what if I sin what if I break the commandments of God God will do unto you what you normally do to your child when he or she does something that is not right. And I'm also a parent. When my children do something bad, mm. I beat them or sometimes I rebuke them. Mm. Okay? But they will never stop to be my children. Isn't it? Mm. The, these children of yours will never stop to be your children. And they will never lose the membership of this family. But when they do something wrong, you do what? You beat them. The Bible shows us the same that once we are saved we remain saved we become the children of god by believing but if we go sinning against god god will punish us in this flesh but he will never take us to hell because we believed in him in the son jesus christ the bible says in hebrews let me quickly show you that the bible says in the book of hebrews chapter 12 the bible says and you have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. Paul indicates that believers are also struggling with sin. You know, even if you get saved today, the temptation of sinning will always be with you. But Paul says you can resist sin. That means you can avoid sin. Okay? But he says what? Verses 5. And you have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, is, God is calling you his child. Despise no doubt the chastening of the Lord, nor offend when thou art rebuked of him. Chastening is beating. So just in case you go sinning and being a child of God, you expect two things from God. Either chastisement or rebuking. Just the same way you handle your children. Then he says what? Verse 6. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. The Bible says, if God loves you, he will punish you. And scourge every son whom he receiveth. But you, uh, and, and then it says, if you enjoy chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? He's asking which kind of a child is not punished by a parent. So he wants you to understand that the moment you call on the name of Jesus Christ, you become his child. And then when you begin to do some stupid things against him, you expect chastisement. That is a beating or a punishment. You understand? Mm. Then he says, then he says, but if you be without chastisement, mm. he says, just in case you realize that God is not punishing you. You are just sinning freely and God is not punishing you. He says what? He says, uh, but if you be without chastisement, where offer a partakers, then are you bastards and not son? This child is not yours, isn't it? Mm. Are you able just to beat this child anyhow? 
because it's not your child mm -hmm. but you can beat your child isn't it mm -hmm. so god is saying if truly you you, you 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 call yourself a child of god and you choose to go committing sin freely god will beat you but on matters going to heaven is just believing on the lord jesus christ all right so you can see that at the end of the day you will keep the commandments of god not because you want to go to heaven but because you don't want god to chastise you but to bless you all right now i want to let you go but before i let you go um if I let you go, I'll want you to make a choice by yourself, which is a very important choice. If you make it today, in the will of God, you'll be safe, right? Mm. So you've heard that the Bible says you have to do what to go to heaven? To believe. To believe in Jesus Christ, isn't it? Mm. Do you have to be a good person to go to heaven? Mm. No, isn't it? Mm. So the question will be, do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Mm. Okay. Do you believe that he died on the cross because of your sins? Mm. Do you want him to save you today? Okay, let me show you what you have to do according to the scriptures. If you want him to save you today, the Bible says this sister in Romans chapter 10. Uh, <clears throat> sorry, sorry about that. Let me find my way to the book of Romans chapter 10. The Bible says what? That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. What is the Bible saying? If you confess, if you have no problem confessing that Jesus is Lord, and if you have no problem in your heart believing that he died and came back to, the, to life by the power of God, God says he will save you. That is a proof that you have no problem that Jesus is the only Savior. It's a, it's a proof that you have no problem that Jesus is the only power that can save you from hell. Okay? Then it says, was studying, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Did you see that? So, why are you calling upon him? You want him to save you. Anytime you are, anytime, anytime you are in danger, you begin to scream calling for someone to come and help you. Now what is facing you is the danger of going to hell. If you don't want to go to hell, you're going to call on Jesus. You're going to ask Jesus, please save me now because I don't want to go to hell. Okay? So, if you are willing, I can help you do so now by you just asking to save you. But the faith that is in your heart is what is God looking at. If you have faith in his son, he's going to save you. But the mouth will have no problem asking Jesus to save you. Can I help you now? To ask him to save you now? Okay. So it's very easy. You are going to pray this prayer after me. But what is saving you is the faith in your heart. Say, Lord Jesus. Please forgive me of all my sins and give me eternal life. I believe that you died and rose again because of my sins. Thank you, Jesus, for salvation. In Jesus' name, I am saved. Amen.